Hello and welcome to the Scorer. In today's video we'll be running through the initial setup steps after you've just signed up for a Scorer to help you quickly get up and running. After signing into the trial, after every login you'll be taken directly to the dashboard and that's what we can see here. The dashboard looks a bit empty now but once you've been using a Scorer for a while this area will show you any tasks that are coming due. It will also show you the breakdown of the time utilization over the last few days, like the kind of amount of time you're spending on the job versus traveling. It will also give you the breakup in terms of your job revenue and profit, obviously controlled by permissions. And the last section here will show you any user licenses, so things like certifications, inductions, or training that are expiring or coming due soon. The main top navigation bar lets you jump through all the areas in a score. This is where you can go to find, like, say, a customer or look up quote details, jobs, or invoices. Today we're mainly dealing with the administration and setup. This is where you set up everything in a scorer and configure it to your particular workflow. So first up, I'm going to jump into the company details. And this is a section that basically has all the information regarding your company. So we can see here that we've initially got the details I entered when signing up. Uh, other thing to note on the top here, as you see, this is an ad company. And this allows you to run multiple companies from the one Ascora database. So if you've got two different brands, or you have been running, say, plumbing and electrical, or carpentry and something else, you can set them up as completely different companies. Or if you have two different brands, so say you're a pest control company and you're operating on different brand names, you can set them up straight from here. So I'm going to go through and just finish off the rest of the main details here. Registration details on the right hand side here is basically for other things you may have for your business, such as your ABN number, uh, so you've got a plumbing license or gas fitting license, you can set that through here, and these registration numbers like this will also show up on your invoicing. A little bit further below, I can set up the physical address, so this is the office address, and also the address that is used when you go through looking at your GPS coordinates. So you jump onto the EPS map, this is the central point of the map. If you go through and find you're starting off the coast of Africa somewhere, it just means that you probably haven't got an address set up here. So it's going to go through and enter our office address here. You've got an option on the side where you want to enter different physical addresses. So the postal address, I'm going to leave it the same. Invoicing detail, if you want your bank account to show up on the invoice to generate, you can just enter it through here. If there's a particular message that you want to have shown on your invoice, you can enter it here as well. And you can tick just to include the banking details. So by ticking that, it's going to include my BSB account number and bank account name. Uh, at the moment, I've got my physical address included on my invoice. If you prefer not to have that shown, you can basically untick it here and it won't be shown to generate an invoice. Just scrolling down, you can see this is the area where there's a lot more of the kind of corporate branding. So you know, your company logos, branding images, invoice headers. Uh, so it's going to head upload our demo ones now. I've got my image uploaded. I'm going to go through upload my branding as well. And the main difference is the company logo is what's shown on your invoicing. The company branding is shown on your online portals. Things like your customer portal, inquiry portal, will come through on here. The invoice header is a bit different. You really only have to upload either a company logo or invoice header. An invoice header really just allows you to replace the whole top strip of your invoice. So if you've got an invoice header where you want to have a few different association logos or some more information shown there, or it's a heavily graphical one on your current invoices, you can upload that through here. On the left hand side, we've got our terms and conditions. So if you've got your current T's and C's page, uh, all you have to do is have that in a PDF format and you can upload it here. And then that will be included on every invoice that goes out of a scorer. So that basically set up all our company information. I'm just going to go ahead and save that now. And then all my details that are saved. Okay, so next up, we're just going to drill through some of the other settings we've got access to. There's obviously a lot more settings here than I'm going to cover today. Just really going through the, the kind of core settings you need to get up and running with a scorer. So next area really comes down to your system settings. 
And this is the area where you can set up your different job numbering. So depending on what quote numbers you're up to now, job number invoice numbers, you just set what that next number will be in a score. I uh, usually find it's easier to round up. So say I'm at invoice or quotes 400, I can easily round it up to 500. And so I'm just going to start them off at 500. That way I know anything that's 500 or above came from a scorer. Anything before that came from my previous system or paper books. On the right hand side here, I've got the email set up. And this is the email account that you're setting up to allow a scorer to use to send out on your behalf. And it's basically the same details that you would enter if you're setting up Outlook, if you're setting up your phone, it's the same kind of email details through here you'd need. Just start out information now. And moving along next, we'll just jump into the job section. So from jobs, there's quite a few things in here we actually can configure. I'm just going to start with common phrases. And common phrases are really there to better help out your guys out on the road entering details quickly. So it's basically the same kind of common sentence that you may have. Okay. Let's save those. And that allows the guys to go through and just basically one tap select the sentence that will come through onto the iPad. Sign off clause what will be displayed to the clients. Uh, next up, let's go through job types. So job types allow you to break up the work you're doing in a scorer in different types. So you may have installation versus maintenance. You may have commercial and domestic. You can effectively just go through here and, and configure them that way. You know, so you can also set up income and labor codes. And once I have this configured and connected to my accounting package, this will actually be drop downs from say zero or mile or QuickBooks. I can set up the different checklists that will be working once I create a job or quote of this type. And I can change the color that will come through on the main schedule. So the web schedule is actually colored based on your job types. This you can quickly look and see what is that type of job that's being done. Save that for now. Job priorities can be changed. So high, medium, low by default. You can also add more things to it. Save that for now. Next section we'll just drill through is the rates and charges. So under rates and charges, you can enter the different call-out rates. So whatever call-out charges you may have now. If you don't have a call-out right, don't charge anything for a call-out, I would recommend just basically adding a free call-out option. That way, at least if you're not charging a call-out, at least the customer's reminded us on the invoice and sort of things. On the right hand side, you've got your labor roles and rates. So for here, you can control whether you've got domestic, whether you've got commercial, whether you've got, say, consultancy, whether you've got apprentice rates. You can just go through them, set them up from here. You notice there's an hourly estimated cost. And the reason it's estimated is it's this cost that's used when you're going through and creating a quote compared to on the job, it's actually based on the real pay rates and employment costs attached to the users that are checking in and checking out. Cost here, let me save that. And obviously I can keep going through, adding as many call-out charges, adding as many labor rates as I really want to. So basically that's it in terms of initial setup. So now we've got our call-out charges set, we've got our labor rates and roles set, we've got our different job types configured, we've got our company information configured. The next steps from here are going through adding on more users. So configuring everyone else in your team and the level of access they want to have. And you can also import supply items, import inventory into the system. So this is a handy template just on here you can download to import through. Uh, you also got other ones where you can import customers. And you can do that from uploading a CSV or an Excel workbook. Or if you connect a score to your accounting package, we can import them directly from there. Also, don't forget the Scorer team is here to give you a hand if you need help getting up fast to get the most value from your trial. Just give us a call on 08 or email us at support at Check out tomorrow's video. We'll run through more on dealing with customers. 
Or if you can't wait, jump on our website at www.ascora.com.au and you'll be able to watch it now. Thanks for watching and please do check out our other videos.